welcome to our Saviour's Lutheran Church here in Port Lincoln and welcome to this message today. One of the readings for this Sunday is from Matthew chapter 11. We're going to focus on the last two verses of Matthew 11 where Jesus says these words. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Those are sweet words, aren't they? Refreshing words. Sooner or later, we find ourselves in need of that promised rest that Jesus talks about. Because the business of life is demanding. And over the past few months, many of you would have carried a greater than usual burden. Concerns can weigh us down. Unrealistic demands that are placed on us can weigh us down. Just dealing with changes that we've had to deal with over the past month has been enough to deal with. Then there are those things that burden us, COVID-19 or not. There are family issues of one kind or another. Tragedies that strike us. Illness. Injury. All these things can be burdens and weigh heavily on us. And so we find comfort in Jesus' words. As we come to him, we'll find rest for our souls. But there's another kind of burden that we can experience that I think Jesus is addressing even more directly and more pointedly. You see, a big part of Jesus' message as he taught, as he preached, as he went around the place and interacted with people, is that God's grace and forgiveness is what really matters in the kingdom of God. The parables he tells, the prodigal son, the mustard seed, the Pharisee and the tax collector, the lost sheep, they're all parables about how God is a God of grace who works in unexpected and surprising ways. It's interesting to me that Jesus gets most upset with the religious types around the place. Those who seem to think that the way to live your life as a religious person is to make sure that you keep all the rules. Now these were good people that Jesus was getting upset with. These were the ones who others looked up to as moral examples. And Jesus gets mad with them. Why? Why should Jesus get mad at people who are just trying to live a good life? Well, he got mad with them because of the burdens that they put on others. If you really want to hear Jesus having a go at the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, check out Matthew chapter 23. Jesus calls them hypocrites repeatedly. People who lay a burden on others' backs but don't lift a finger to help. They're like whitewashed tombs that look good on the outside, but on the inside there's only death and everything unclean. And he says a whole lot more than that too, a whole 36 verses worth. And it's pretty damning stuff. I get the impression that Jesus is not a fan of placing religious burdens on the back of people. That's why he says, come to me. If you're weary of the religious demands of life, and the religious burdens that are placed on you, come to me. I'll give you rest from all that. In contrast to rules and regulations and doing the right thing and making sure of it all, Jesus offers himself as a simple, sure way to a relationship with God. See, human wisdom might suggest to us that the path to God is for those who are good enough, 
those who are learned enough, those who are religious enough. But Jesus' way is open to the humblest of minds, to children, to people who have had no tutoring from great religious masters, from fishermen, from all sorts of people who he gathers together. No great learning is needed. No great striving for perfection is needed. When I look at another character in the Bible, the character of Paul, I see a person who's got this right. You see, Paul was a great man of learning. And he could have relied on his learning in order to kind of get in the good books with God. He was an achiever in the Jewish system. But he once said that he counts all of that as nothing, as rubbish, as garbage, for the sake of Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 3 he says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old, and I am from the nation of Israel and from the tribe of Benjamin. I am a true Hebrew. As a Pharisee, I strictly obeyed the law of Moses. And I was so eager that I even made trouble for the church. I did everything the law demands in order to please God. But Christ has shown me that what I once thought was valuable is worthless. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. I have given up everything else and counted all as garbage. All I want is Christ and to know that I belong to him. I could not make myself acceptable to God by obeying the law of Moses. God accepted me simply because of my faith in Christ. Come to me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Martin Luther, the great reformer of the 16th century, grew up in a world of religious burden. God was often depicted as a judge who weighs our good deeds and our bad deeds. And there was a belief in purgatory, that there was an in-between place where you paid for the sins you committed in this earth. But you could buy indulgences if you get time off purgatory. And that was a practice that in the Middle Ages was open to a lot of abuse and a lot of corruption. As a young man, Luther made a deal with God. He was caught in a thunderstorm and fearing for his life, he made a vow. Save me, St. Anne, I will become a monk. Well, he survived and he became a monk. And by all accounts, he was a very good monk. He did all that was required of him and more. Later on, he said something like this. He said, if anyone could be saved by their monkery, it would have been me. And yet, Luther lived with a gnawing question. How good is good enough? How good do I have to be for God to say to me, that's good enough? How do you know when you've done enough to earn God's favour? And so Luther was burdened. He had no peace. At least not until he discovered the biblical truth of grace. He discovered in Romans that we are not put right with God by doing what the law demands, but only through what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so we trust, we have faith in Jesus' goodness and Jesus' righteousness and not our own. And that released Luther of his spiritual burden. Come to me. If you're weary, and I'll give you rest, Jesus says. So what is it that burdens you? Do others place a burden on your back? 
Or perhaps you sometimes place a burden on your own back. You see, sometimes people expect Christians to be perfect. If there's a story in the news about some kind of human weakness and, and there's a Christian involved, there's usually an extra strong reaction. How can a Christian act like that? Christians aren't supposed to be involved in corruption or extramarital affairs or gossip or drunkenness or lies or, or any other human failing. But the reality is that knowing about the right thing doesn't mean that we always do it. In Romans chapter 7, another of our Bible readings for today, Paul is bothered that he could know all this stuff about how to respond to God's love, how to live as a Christian, but what he ends up doing is the opposite. The good that I want to do, I don't do. And the bad that I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. What a wretched man I am. What's wrong with me, Paul says. But then he returns to that sweet promise of Jesus. Thanks be to God who has given me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, Paul knows where rest is to be found. Not in doing religious acts and thinking religious thoughts. Rest is found in Jesus. Come to me and I'll give you rest. And so we can say with Paul, what a hopeless case I am. But thanks be to God who gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we place religious burdens on ourselves. Even though in faith we know, we acknowledge that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light, there are times when we don't feel that. There are times when we feel a heavy burden. Sometimes we don't feel forgiven. We know in our heads that God forgives sins and maybe that he can even forgive my sins. But sometimes we still beat ourselves up with our sins or maybe that's just me. There's a very human logic at play when we think like this. When we've done something terribly wrong, it just doesn't leave our conscience. We have a burdened conscience. And just because the pastor says your sins are forgiven on Sunday morning along with a hundred other people, it doesn't mean that you don't think about it anymore. And because we think about it, we tell ourselves there must be something more that I have to do. There must be something more that I have to do for pay for my offence. Nothing in life is free. Well, you know what? The burdened soul will be best helped by trusting these words of Jesus. You are forgiven. As the pastor says in the absolution or forgiveness of sins in, in, in worship services in the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority I forgive your sins Jesus says come to me if you're weary and carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest and that's a promise that God's people really need so don't let me or anyone else tell you that you have to do this or do that to make sure that you are right with God. Don't be burdened by other people's expectations of you or your own expectations of yourself, for that matter. Listen to Jesus. Hear his call to simply come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you, that we can bring our burdens, we can bring those things that trouble us, those things that happen to everybody, the, the stresses of life. We can also bring those religious burdens that bug us, those times when we don't feel forgiven. We can bring it all to you, Lord. And we've promised to give us rest. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.